have a proper celebration. Always a pleasure to be in the company of my uh, learning senior. Uh, Amaliba, I was one year his junior in the law school. So. Oh, is that so? Yeah, I was uh, only one year. Uh, only one year. He was my senior from as in Legon and then we went to law school. Think one, one, one is one year is small. It's not small. So what should I say? <laughs> yeah, I, what should I you are his senior. I didn't know that. Uh, Amaliba is one year my senior. Because you. I call you Akwadanya, because everybody here is, is, has been your senior for most of the times that uh, we've introduced you together or maybe we've made inferences. But please go ahead. So let me state categorically that I, as in, we all understand that it's the duty of the, of the courts to say what the law is. And when matters that borders on interpretation arises, essentially what the court is doing is to give a clarification on what the law is concerning the constitutional provision where there is a confusion and, and so it's, it's essentially that's what the supreme court did uh what's it called uh, uh, uh was it on tuesday on tuesday yes but having said that um, I, I think I, I i need to start by stating my position my position is that i disagree vehemently with the decision of the of the of the of the supreme court you disagree vehemently Ve vehemently with and i stand on all forces on all force with the dissenting view and when you read the 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 ruling of the of the court you realize that there were two broad issues as in there, there were a number of issues but there were two broad issues one the first issue what is on interpret on, on on the jurisdiction whether or not the 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 jurisdiction of the supreme court had been properly invoked, invoked yes and on that decision, it was five two. It was it was it was five two. On the other issues, as in on whether on the interpretation to be given to uh, what's called Article ninety seven one G, and then the in granting the reliefs, that one in on under on, on the proper in, interpretation of Article ninety seven two, the members have not vacated their seats. On that, I think it was unanimous because the two judges, as in Tanko uh, 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 and Lavelace did not make a pronouncement on those issues i think we all need to need to uh, need to be clear on that now i think when you read the decision in its entirety there is a there's a fundamental confusion in the in the in the decision of the of the of the of the majority now article 28 in page on page 24 they stated that one of their reasons for why they thought they had jurisdiction to even detain the matter in spite of the clear terms of article 99. now with the permission let me read please do now on page 24 it says that but more important is the need to emphasize that the dispute in issue arises solely from what the proper interpretation application of article 97 1 gh is to the fate of the affected mps mm. filing nominations to contest the next election as independents or on tickets of political parties that they do not currently represent this suit the suit essentially hinges on the pure question of law, mm. specifically the proper construction of Article 97 1G and H to establish the legal threshold for triggering its provision without delving into factual disputes regarding seat vacation in Parliament, which properly lies within the High Court's purview mm. under Article 99 of the Constitution. Accordingly, to the extent that the exclusive preserve to settle a matter of interpretation of Article 21 and Article 131 and 2 lies with the Supreme Court. It is incumbent on this court to exercise jurisdiction and resolve the interpretation for the application of the High Court. It is incumbent on this court to exercise jurisdiction and resolve the interpretation for the application for the application of the High Court. Mm. You understand? So, my understanding of this is, is the Supreme Court's job is to simply interpret the meaning of the of the of the of the provision under dispute, and then where they have made such interpretation, where they've made such interpretation, it is for the high court then to make a determination. Now, when you go to now having beautifully laid down this principle, they then proceeded to give their interpretation of the said of the said article now and indeed you you find their interpretation even in the in their holding and so when you go to page uh, 35 where they said in the end we I, we reiterate that on the true and proper interpretation article 97 1g only requires that an mp must vacate their seat if they leave their party under which they were elected to join another party 
or become independent and seek to remain in parliament under their new political status. You understand? Now, I agree with the interpretation they give. They, they give. I think, I think it's an interpretation that every, all of us here in, in, in our submissions on this issue have alluded to. We, all, we, have, we have all said that under a proper interpretation of 90, Article 97, you must vacate your seat if you leave the party under whose ticket you entered parliament. Now the question then is, in the determination of whether or not you have vacated your seat under the provision of 97-1G, you need to make a determination whether or not the member, the MP, whether or not they have left their party. That determination needs to be made. The determination, you need to make it so then it must become an issue. That having interpreted the 97-1G to, to hold that if you leave your party, then you must vacate your seat. Then the question becomes, then we become, so the four, so the three MPs who had left their, who, 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 who have attempted or have given indication that they are going to contest the election as independent, have they left their parties? Whether or not they have left their parties by filing to contest as independent. That, that, that question is not a question of law. That is a question of fact. And the question is whether or not the Supreme Court has the jurisdiction to answer that question. It's a question of fact. Whether or not you have left, you see, the question whether or not you are a member of your party is a question of fact. It's a question that the 1992 constitution won't answer because that will depend on the constitution of the political party. And so that's a question of fact. So in, in, in an ordinary case where you claim that somebody has left the party in court, you'll be, you'll be expected to give evidence. And the evidence to that question will be to present the constitution of that party. You, you understand? And that's why the constitution in this wisdom says so whenever there is a question as to whether or not a seat has been, been is, is vacant, having regard to the 97, says that it's the high court that's the proper forum to determine that question. You, you, you understand? Is there is that because the Supreme Court do not have the jurisdiction to determine on that issue of fact. The original jurisdiction, so far as that question is concerned, is lies with the with the with the High Court. But what did they do? Having interpreted, they then went further to make a determination whether or not the MPs concerned have left their parties or not. And then they came to that erroneous conclusion that by they filing their nominations, only gave an intention of what they intended to do in the next parliament without addressing the issue whether or not as of today they have left their 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 parties and that is the confusion in the judgment of the court because at the end of the day like i'm saying the question whether or not a member has left his party is a question of fact now and so if they had taken the position of the dissenting view you understand and restricted themselves to the powers given granted them under article 2 and article 130 Simply interpret. You understand? Simply interpret. You understand? Because, like I'm saying, they do not have the jurisdiction to go into the factual issues. And factual issues, then you will be calling for evidence. You understand? And that jurisdiction lies with the, with the high court. And so right now, what they've done is that they've given a judgment which portends serious confusion for our democracy. Because you know what, uh, what is going to happen because of, of this? What do you think will be the implication? Under MPP's constitution. It says that if you contest against a candidate sponsored by their party, or if you support any candidate against the candidate support, uh, uh, was supported by uh, sponsored by by party, you automatically cease to be a member of their party. Indeed, we saw what happened to Hosein Adoye, to uh, Nana Ohinintu, and so now this ruling is saying this ju uh, judgment is effectively saying that if you contest against. Uh, what's called a, a candidate sponsored by the NPP, and let's say you are you are an NPP member or of any other party, for that party. Even though per their constitution, you, you cease to be a member of their party, you still be in in uh, you, you still remain in parliament as if you were an NPP member. Is, it, it, is that is that not? Is it not true that when you look at the judgment, the Supreme Court, in its considered view, make consider, uh, considerations for the rights of the constituents who elected those individuals, that for them, for the remaining period, 
on which these members should be in parliament could, if they vacate or are made to vacate their seat, be deprived of a member of parliament. And the, it's very important. The Supreme Court itself is saying, per their interpretation, they themselves are saying that in spite of all the reasons they are giving, if you leave, because right now, the law in Ghana right now is that per this Supreme Court decision, you don't even need to quote 971, per this Supreme Court ruling uh, decision, the position of the law is that if you leave the party of which you were a member, yeah, so on who secretary you, you, uh, you entered parliament? If you leave that party, in fact, uh, uh, he said with justice, his, his lordship, just he said, he said even went further to say that, per his understanding, if you resign, if you resign from your party, it doesn't matter whether you are going to uh, 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 deprive your constraints of their rep representation, you automatically cease to be an MP. That is what Justice Isidu said in this judgment. You, 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 you understand? So, if Justice Isidu said that, that if you resign, you understand? Is that not whether or not you have resigned? Is that not a matter of fact? Because the constitution does not deal with issues of where you've resigned from your party. It deals with the issue of where you have resigned from parliament. There are two different issues. If you resign from your party, you understand? It's a question of fact, not a question of law. You, 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 you understand? And whether or not a resignation from your party will cause you to leave your party falls within the ambit of the reasons the parties have given. Uh, under their constitutions, for what action you, you undertake will, will make you leave their party. You, you understand? And that's why I'm saying that immediately the Supreme Court, even though they held, having held that they, they had jurisdiction to entertain this matter, went ahead to then give clarification to the extent of their jurisdiction. Okay. As against 19, please let me conclude on this. Mm. You, you understand? Because they made it clear that when it comes to interpretation, they have the jurisdiction, irrespective of Article 9, what Article 99 is saying. However, they haven't given the interpretation, it then behoves on, on, on the High Court to then apply those interpretations. So having given this clear law in their own, what authority did they then have to then delve into factual issues? Because whether, the question is whether or not the MP has left his party. Eh? It's not a question of law. It's a question of fact. And it's a question that is only the High Court that has the power, the jurisdiction to answer. All right. So I have this one from Nani Al-Sapon. He's a regular too. You know him. He's a very good friend. Okay. He says, ask, he says, ask the MPP lawyer. Did Nano he need to? Okay, that's for you. Uh, or you, Bonnie you, Face. You let me have after, be. After, you, uh, and after that. that. Okay. So now, what remedies are there now? What, what do we, I mean, practically, what, what does it mean, you futuristically? See, you see, first of all, Ghanaians need to understand the character of the MPP now. You understand? And need to understand that the Supreme Court, by this judgment, is helping perpetuate the new character of the MPP. The MPP right now is a threat to the rule of law. Okay. The MPP, as it stands today, is a threat you to can, the rule of law. You can't make those now, now, why, why, why am I saying that? You see, we need to understand that the purpose of the Constitution we've taken upon ourselves is to guarantee us the rule of law. Now, one of the abiding principles of the rule of law is an abhorrence for arbitrariness. One is a support of the principle of or the certainty of the law. Of the law. That's one of the abiding principles of, and it's also against acts of capriciousness. So that the MPP, a major political institution, whose focus ought to be to build the right political culture that will sustain and guarantee for us the rule of law. Now they are saying that in spite of their constitutional provision, which says that if you support an independent candidate, mm. if you support any candidate apart from the candidate they are sponsoring, you understand, you automatically leave their party. They, said they still reserve their right in spite of this clear term of their constitution. Automatic. In terms of the clear automaticity, they still reserve the right to do that. That when my brother Jantua has conducted himself in this manner, that would necessitate forfeiture after him there, he will stay. Uh, if my learned friend, a very good friend, senior, <laughs> has done uh, the only mistake that he went to a uh, uh, prime place, he should have come to Achimota. <laughs> That's the only mistake. <laughs> my very good friend. When he has conducted himself in this man manner, mm, uh, for him, there, they will sack him. Like they, they sacked on him too, and who said, Oh, yeah. When Alan Chamata had not even become a candidate, they, they, uh, they sack them. That is an act that is capricious. That is an act that is arbitrary. That is an act that flies against everything we know and believe in as supporting or guaranteeing as the rule of law. Now, what the Supreme Court is saying is that they support that arbitrariness. Mm. Because the Supreme Court, when you read their judgment again, you go to page 27, and you, your people can go to page 27. 
You understand? Mm. And my brother here supports my position on that. Or when you go to page 20, I'm coming, when you go to page 27. Please, you, you have two minutes, wrap up. He says that, yes, says an MP must vacate his seat if he leaves the party under which he was elected to join another party or become independent and seeks to remain in parliament under their new political status. You understand? Mm -hmm. That is what they are saying. Mm -hmm. Now, this, now, so this is the law. This law will necessitate a determination as to the membership of the MP currently. This, this because if he leaves the party, so there must be a question. Has he left the party? party or not? That question must be determined. And I'm saying that the jurisdiction to determine this question does not lie with the Supreme Court. It does not. The determination of this question is a question of fact which must be heard by the High Court. So the Supreme Court, after they've given this beautiful law, to go ahead and make a determination of that question, because that's what they did. Because they gave the release 1A, 1B, 1C, which in effect was to say that they have not, they have not left their parties as of today. But they do not have the jurisdiction to answer that question of fact. You understand? And that's why we are saying that, one, they put themselves in this big pit when they, in the first place, held that they that their jurisdiction had properly been invoked. Okay. You understand? Because then they put themselves in that pit. Right, yeah, right, yeah. So what they should have done, please let me conclude on this. Okay. You, understand? you gave me just two minutes in the earlier one. I have a lot of minutes. I'll stand there. You see, what they should have done mm, was to take the position the dissenting uh, uh, viewers took. Judges. The judges took. You understand? Allow the matter to go to the high, high court. court. Simple. The end per article 131, this issue of interpretation will come up. Yeah. Then that okay. issue will be referred to that. Then you limit yourself to just the interpretation. Mm. Then there be there'll be a burden on the high court to then apply the interpretation as you have so given. Because there's no way you can answer that question without determining whether or not they are still members of their party. You understand? Now I want to implore all Ghanaians. We when we say we have a responsibility to defend our constitution, we have a responsibility to defend the purpose of our constitution. Because the purpose of our constitution is to guarantee us the rule of law, because that's the only way where the aim and purpose and objectives of our constitution would meet. And those aims and objectives are to protect our lives, to protect our liberties, to protect our fundamental rights to pursue our happiness. Now, when you have a political party that is acting in a manner that's inimical, adverse to the rule of law, then you must understand clearly that the MPP, the MPP right now, is a threat to national security. They are a threat to the rule of law. And we must do everything in our power to ensure All that right. they do not retain you power. Are, you are crying. Uh, no, no, please. No, no, please. No, 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 please. The two of you, the two of you, please. Let us do that. Let us do that. Let us do that.